Hello, I'm Ryan Robinson. And I'm Timothy Rogerman. And today, we'll be taking a look at the effects that lightning flashes have on various soil types. The soil types that we'll be looking at include potting soil, building sand, as well as gravel. Although we would have liked to use real lightning, this is a bit impractical. So instead, we substituted it with an 8x20 microsecond current impulse generator set to combination mode. Now when this generator is set in this mode, it's capable of reaching maximum voltages of up to 20 kV and currents of up to 10 kA. Now although this isn't quite within the region of real world lightning flashes, which generally average about 30 kA, our experiments were small scale and it's generally accepted that these results will translate into real world applications. The experiments we carried out allowed us to make approximations about the electric fields present in the different soils. We were also able to measure the currents that flowed through the soils in each experiment. We were therefore able to characterize the time delays present in each experiment. These delays refer to the time taken from the instant the circuit is excited to the point at which maximum current is reached. We also performed a number of other experiments which allowed us to determine the soil parameters which had the greatest influence on breakdown strength. These parameters include resistivity, permittivity as well as soil moisture content. So to start us off, we'll cross over to Tim who will tell us a little bit more about soil moisture content. Several samples of each soil type were taken. These were weighed, dried out using an oven, and weighed again to determine the existing moisture content. Once impulse tests were completed on these dry samples, water was added to each of the soil types to increase the moisture content as shown. Resistivity can be defined as the degree to which a medium opposes the flow of electrical current through it. Now in order to test for the resistivity values of each soil, we made use of a Perspex tube, two brass electrodes and an LCR meter. As you can see from the markings here on the Perspex tube, we tested various distances of the soil between the two electrodes. We then found the average resistivity value from these tests using the formula that's now shown on screen. As you can see from the results table now shown, we found that the soils with higher moisture content percentages had lower resistivity values across the board. We now cross back to the electric field testing station for some impulse tests. As can be seen, the test vessel is connected to the impulse generator. These voltage probes are positioned at equal increments from the electrode in order to infer electric field measurements. The Pearson coil is used in conjunction with the oscilloscope in order to read the currents flowing through the test sample. Here, the blue line represents the charging voltage of the generator. The yellow line represents the current driven through the soil and all these lines here represent the voltages measured at the various points within the soil. In conclusion, we found that moisture content affected the electric field profiles and the ionization performances of the various soil types tested. We were also able to determine, within a reasonable degree of accuracy, the resistivity value for each of the soils tested when compared to the values we found within literature. Time delay data gathered supported other evidence that showed that soil ionized more efficiently when wet unless it became saturated. So, from myself, Ryan Robinson, and me, Timothy Ruckerberg. Cheers.